It is me, it is me, Mr. EMP for I Make Plays TV. What you get is what you see. And what are you seeing today, today, and through the entirety of 2021? This is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon as a franchise. Now, this is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon as a franchise, and I am 27 years old. So, obviously, Pokemon played a huge part in my formative years alongside Dragon Ball Z and Yu-Gi-Oh! The year of Pokemon uh, has seen and is going to see, what, albums, virtual concerts, clothing collaborations, and a bunch more new things to celebrate the occasion. And this includes games, right? We're gonna get Snap, Pokemon Snap, and that's gonna get its own video because that means the absolute world to me. I can't even get into explaining what that game means to me right now. But we're also getting, later this year, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. We also got the announcement of uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus, and what we're gonna do is cover both of those in one video today to save time. We'll have a Pokemon Snap video a little later because that holds a special place in my heart. Start with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now these are like heart gold and soul silver, not like the Let's Go's. That is to say, these are direct remakes of those previous Gen 4 games. Now I'm a big fan of Gen 4, even though I started with Gen 3. Now see, Gen 3 was my first, but Gen 4 was the cool new guy on the block with an edge. Everything about it was cool. The anime, like Ash's new fit was on point and Paul was the coolest, most badass rival to ever exist. The Pokemon designs for Gen 4 are crazy. I still say Infernape deserves everything that Charizard has and more. And on top of that, I feel like it was the first on the new hardware and that made it cool in itself. See, I couldn't get my hands on a DS and that made it even cooler, right? I didn't have a DS in Gen 4 was the forbidden fruit. And when I did get my hands on it, mm, did it taste so good. I got my hands on a DS years later and discovered that it was one of the most punishing gins and I loved it. I love the way that that game hurt me. See, the journey was hard and it required grinding. The boss fights really felt like that and that's lost on the new gen. See, I would call the new gens gym leaders and, 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 and trial uh, heads or whatever they, they call them in Sun and Moon. I wouldn't say that they're boss fights because nobody is particularly hard. No, 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 no. Cynthia was the most powerful champion to exist in the entirety of Pokemon. Now see, most people are worried about the art style uh, and they were worried about Link's Awakening remakes too. Uh, those turned out fine, right? You, the art style where it's kind of chibi and 3D. They did the same thing with Link's Awakening, so I'm not quite sure why everybody's freaking out, right? Uh, I think that it looks good and it's going to play good and it's gonna be a great medium for Gen 4. The worry that I have, right, is that they'll nerf Cynthia and everything else about this generation. Now, the Pokemon games have moved toward accessibility and making them easy for everybody to play. But like I said, Gen 4 had an edge. It was difficult, right? It was difficult to work with. It was, it was, you had to really want it. You really had to grind to make sure that you could get your Pokemon up to where they needed to be because these bosses were bosses, right? The leader of the team galaxy, the evil team, he was, a, a, yeah, he was a boss. I'm telling you. And of course, Cynthia, we are, like I said, wait, we've already discussed how Cynthia and her Garchomp and her Spiritomb got down, right? Right? So with that being said, I'm super worried about what they're going to do to nerf that generation, but I'm very excited about the prospect of uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl as a whole. And I'm wondering where we're going to get uh, Giratina and Platinum in all of this, right? Where is Giratina's role to play in all of this? Because we've seen Dialga, we've seen Palkia, uh, and we've even seen Arceus. 
in a different manner, but we have not seen uh, a Giratina, and he's the one I'm very interested in. Uh, I want I want to go to the, what was it? The Distortion World. I need it. I need more of it. If this Gen 4 remake happens and we do not go to the Distortion World, I'm going to be extremely disappointed. I'm calling bullshit. I'm calling shenanigans. Speaking of shenanigans, this is the perfect way to transition. The fact that they fucking went for it, Chad. They went for open world Pokemon. They actually did the thing. The wild area was just a precursor to this. And you can tell from when you watch the trailer, though you cannot tell much more from when you watch the trailer. We, we're not sure the extent that they've gone for it because we don't have much here. It could be the uh, the wild area just expanded a bit, the illusion of an open world. But from what I'm understanding, it looks like they went for open world Breath of the Wild style Pokemon, and I could not be more excited for that. Throwing the Pokeballs looks really cool. Uh, the dodge roll suggests that the trainer is going to be in some sort of combat or danger as well. Uh, maybe likely against a fight against like maybe an evil team or something. They might not do like Pokemon on trainer combat. Who knows? Um, but it's definitely interesting where we've set the game, right? It's a Sinnoh prequel. And my thought process is perhaps Sinnoh has something to do with Generation 9 being that this game is going to release after the remakes, right? Like after the remakes, it seems like a very weird decision to allow this to be the game that leads into the next generation of Pokemon games. Now, I, it is not without its criticisms on the trailer. Uh, it is still not a visual masterpiece, right? I do wonder if Game Freak is even capable of producing something like, like a visual masterpiece like Breath of the Wild or anything like that. On top of that, it did appear that there were a lot of open spaces, but maybe not much necessarily going on. Now, the game is not supposed to drop until next year, so perhaps that'll change. Perhaps we'll see more dynamic behavior with the Pokemon themselves instead of just kind of sitting there while you try to catch their friends. But what we have here excited me. It definitely did. It's something that we've been waiting on for a very long time. And it proves that Game Freak are listening, though picking and choosing when and where to implement these things, right? Now, if there was ever a, a time to go all out, the 25th anniversary of Pokemon is that time to go all out. Pokemon as a franchise is the one franchise that Nintendo has in its staple that has not evolved in the same manner that I would say like maybe a Mario or something else did. Uh, so I think that this is an opportunity in Arceus for them to take steps forward and for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl to really highlight what the past of Pokemon was and, and what it can be, right? Do not do not wash away the difficulty of Gen 4 because Pokemon was hard. It was difficult. It was a struggle. But when you did beat the champion and become the champion yourself, it was absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and let, let, let's try to keep that feeling with Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and let's try to innovate with Arceus leading into Generation 9. Uh, I'm Mr. EMP for I Make Plays TV. Thank you for coming through and vibing with me. I appreciate you. Y'all have a wonderful day.